G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to U-Boat with Mags. So, it's been a little while since I've actually done any coverage for U-Boat, although I've had a few requests for it recently, so I figured it was time to poke our heads back in and see exactly how development of this uh, submarine management simulator is actually ticking along. And there has been some significant improvements. There's a lot more detail on the operation of the submarine now. There is a new advanced or hardcore targeting mode, although I'm not using it in this particular mission run at the moment, or this particular patrol, because it does have some shortcomings at the moment, although I'll go into those a little bit later. They seem to have optimized some of the loading sections that were a little slow that I had complaints about uh, previously, and they've added some new time advancement options in port. So if you're doing a large resupply, a lot of torpedoes, a lot of fuel, a lot of food, um, and the submarine's going to be out for days, rather than having to sit there on the time acceleration button and wait till time passes, you can now click a button and it'll skip through the appropriate amount of time in just a few seconds, which is nice. They've also added a hell of a lot more warships to it. I had my first encounter with uh, HMS Illustrious the other day, although that uh, did not go in my favour. I wish I'd been recording it. Spot an escort carrier pop up on my list, identify it as illustrious, fire a torpedo, hit her in the bow and she immediately shits out every single aircraft she had and bombs me into oblivion. Should have probably planned that out a little bit better just quietly. But anyways, do not adjust your screen either, it is really this dark. We have launched in the middle of a massive storm and this massive storm is actually going to last on and off for most of our patrol. It is, of course, as per the top left-hand corner of the screen, the 14th of January 1941, and we have departed the French coast under the cover of darkness, and we are heading south down around the edges of Spain and down towards the north tip of Africa. We'll be doing a patrol just a little bit south of the mouth of the Mediterranean. So, being as this is the first patrol of a new career, we are in an entirely unskilled crew outside of basic skills, um, I actually can't remember if that was in the game the last time I played, but there's now a almost, it's pretty basic, but an almost RPG style uh, skill tree for each of the officers on board your ship, as well as your overall ship's crew, the, uh, the average skill level of the, uh, the general enlisted that are on board. The ship's upgrade system is now implemented, although I have not got anything unlocked on it because it requires a lot of renown to be able to do that, and I don't have any at all, as this is my first patrol. And uh, that's actually one of the other new features that's been added too. Crew customization is now a thing, so you can now customize your crew members, including what they look like and what they're wearing. So, yeah, that's pretty nice. Anyway, we'll do a little bit of a fast-forward through time here because this was just a long trip south that didn't actually have me encountering much of anything. Alright, so we have freshly arrived at our patrol zone, and the first thing to do once we've actually arrived is to drop time acceleration and start getting our officers out of bed. For the most part, I've had them on a fairly relaxed rotation on the way down here, try and keep them as fresh as possible so that uh, whatever we encounter once we start our patrol, we have fresh officers ready to engage in combat. So the first thing to do is get our radio operator out of bed and get him checking the airwaves for messages. And as it turns out, yes, we do have a message that is in need of decoding. So while he's working over the Enigma device, it's just a good time to go over the rest of the ship and make sure everything else is in order. And basically it is. It's still night time. We've got some semi-rough seas. We are going to be encountering more storms. But the ship itself is in pretty good nick. So quick time acceleration to complete the message so I can see exactly what we've got. And what we have is mission orders to intercept a particular freighter that's not far from our zone. Now it's not inside of our patrol zone, it is just a little bit to the north of our position. So we're going to have to leave our patrol zone, head out, sink this transport and then come back. This is a little frustrating because it means that this particular mission we've just been issued will not add to our patrol time, so we are going to have to come back down, which means we're going to burn through more food, and we're going to burn through more fuel. And to top it off, the transport is heading away from us, so we've got to chase it back. 
but that is what it is. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there is a hardcore mode for targeting now, which I have also said that I'm not using in this particular uh, campaign. Why? Well, the long and short of it, without getting too much into the details, is it's not very good. The basic elements are all there that are needed, so you've got to work out the ship's speed, the ship's distance to you, the type of the ship, heading, and so on. That's perfectly fine. The problem is the tools that you are given in order to do it. There are key tools that you use when plotting an attack against an enemy ship from a submarine that are simply not available. The heading uh, indicator, for one, is not available. You've got to sort of hand calculate that. Uh, and another one is a stopwatch. And the stopwatch is available, but it's only available from the periscope view. It should also be available from the map view, but it's not. So if you want to use a stopwatch, you either have to use one in real life, or you've got to jump from the map view to the periscope view, use the stopwatch, jump out of the periscope view, and back to the map view in order to be able to work out something that you should be able to do from the plotting table. That's what it's for. Now, I'm not being too critical here because it is early access and they've clearly made some additions here that weren't there previously and I really did want manual targeting to be included. It's just not quite ready yet. There's definitely a hell of a lot more to it than there was when I first got access to U-Boat, but yeah, it just needs a little bit more time, which is something I said in the past too. U-Boat just needed a little bit more time. And a little bit more time has definitely made improvements, so a little bit more time, she'll be good. So for the moment, I'm just going to use the regular targeting systems, and I'll wait until the final version of the of the hardcore um, targeting mode, they're calling it. It really should be just the simulated targeting mode, but if they want to go with hardcore with a name, that's fine. Um, but until the, the finished version of that is in, or until some mods are available that add in the extra tools that are missing and improve the interface for it a little bit as well. The interface for it's a bit shit, to be blunt. Anyways, we've just entered the area of influence of the ships that we are currently tracking. Now we've moved up and around the side and I've got myself an intercept and I'm using the storm at the moment. I can actually stay relatively exposed at this point because visibility is near zero in this storm. Now this makes it a pain in the ass for you guys to see what's actually going on. But it makes it a pain in the ass for the enemy ships to see what's going on as well, which is exactly what I'm working on at this point. I'm actually going to submerge the boat now, not because I'm worried about being detected, but because I want access to the hydrophone, and because I'm using the early form of the Type 7 at the moment with its first hydrophone. The microphones for the hydrophone are actually on the top of the deck, so I need to submerge the boat in order to be able to actually hear what's going on, and the hydrophones can pick up a lot further, as you can see, than the officers on watch or the periscope can pick up. So I'm going to use the hydrophones to plot the attack. Now, the position of the fleet wasn't exactly where I thought it would be. I thought I was getting a really sneaky approach here up onto the side. Unfortunately, they were further ahead than I originally thought. Now, I start plotting an attack solution here, but I I'm sort of skeptical about actually doing it. I've got to be submerged to have maximum range on the hydrophone, but I've got to go faster than I currently am in order to be able to close on the targets, otherwise this is going to be a rearward shot against the target moving away, and this is not good. Unfortunately, the faster I move, the more noise I make, the more noise I make, the shorter the detection range of the hydrophone, which means I need to be able to get closer in order to be able to plot that same solution. And as you can see, I'm not closing on them at this time. So I do follow them here for a little bit, just to see what's going on. But after a bit, what I actually do is turn away figure that they can't detect me in the storm, resurface the boat, go to flank on the diesels and actually rush past the fleet location since I know exactly where they are now, get around the side of them and start that whole attack again, this time letting me get much, much closer to the fleet. And once again, yes, it is pitch black at the moment and yes, this is as dark as it was to play. I could see about as much as you can right now. It, uh... Well, I was about to say it was a bit shit, but part of me doesn't want to, because this is actually really good conditions for this kind of an attack. Because I can freely move on the surface, and they cannot see me. Providing I don't run any lights or anything else on the surface, which I'm not, they cannot see me. I know they're there, they don't know I'm here. 
the ambient noise on the surface as well, if there were any ships in the group that had hydrophones, their hydrophones would be affected by the noise of their own ships travelling and the surface waves that they can't avoid because they can't submerge. But I'm almost far enough ahead at this point, I'm just letting time accelerate a little bit further because I want to make sure I've got enough that I can submerge the boat, go quiet, so down to speed setting 1 or 2, and then cut back across and not have them get past. I want to make sure I'm in optimal position for the point of the attack. And that's about now. I should be able to submerge the boat at this point. Although I'm going to cut across a little bit using time acceleration before that. And then be able to lurk and wait. And that should give me ample time to be able to get solutions on all the targets to set up my attack. The exact number of boats is still unknown. There's at least three in the group. But I'm not 100% sure. Alright, so just double checking to make sure everything is all set. And a quick look on the surface. And as you can see, visibility is just nothing. There's just nothing. Nothing except the small amount of light you get every time the lightning flashes. Which is a really nice effect. I actually like the storm effects. It's not great for YouTube type stuff. But it is really nice to play in. And submerging the boat. Exactly the same reason as last time. The periscope is functionally worthless at this point, but the hydrophones will be very, very useful. So get this boat underwater. Get the radio operator over to the hydrophone station. I should have probably had him uh, resting, although he's not too bad at this point. At the moment, the radio operator is the only crew member I have that can man the radio and can man the hydrophones. As I said, there's a sort of simple RPG mechanic around your offices where they earn XP over time and you can give them new skills. I believe I can actually train some additional officers in using those systems at a later time. So the longer you can keep your U-boat alive and keep your crew alive and get them more XP and more training, performing better and better in missions, you will eventually get them to the point where they can learn to man other stations and then have multiple crew members that you can jump back and forth in between in order to keep the systems active at all times. As well as obviously improving the skill of those that are dedicated to those stations so they can see further and detect ships further, identify ships better, um, get targeting solutions on ships at a higher speed and so on. So we're calculating for our first target. Now, the only downside of using the hydrophones is I cannot identify which one of these ships, and there are three in this group, is the actual target. Although that's only a minor issue when you consider that if I sink all three of the ships, guaranteed one of them was the one that I was after, so we can assume that I sunk the target. Now, I'm just using the plotting information that we've got here at the moment to work out the distances that I'm going to have. Even though the auto torpedo uh, solution calculator, basically the skill of your crew members is used to calculate the shot, I still want to know how far I'm going to be away from the fleets at the time of firing the torpedoes, because that will affect the overall accuracy as well. So my aim is to be within two kilometers. But I don't want to approach at such a speed that I'm going to drop the hydrophone detection range, so I've got to keep it relatively slow so they have time to work out the solution. And I need to develop solutions for at least two of the three ships. I'm working on the basis of roughly two kilometers to the furthest ship, which should have the closest ship coming in at, depending on their spread, somewhere around 1300 meters. Yeah, maybe less, depending on the angle that they're traveling at. Now, my captain's gone and got himself tired at this point, so I'm just going to do a quick changeover and put my first officer on the. Uh, attack periscope again he's not going to be able to see anything at the moment but as the target fleet closes range on our ambush location eventually they're going to get close enough that he will be able to see them and then we can bring his accuracy in he may be able to identify some of the targets directly he'll also be able to help calculate new targeting solutions at a higher speed 
So our first freighter's solution is at 99%. So we're selecting the second freighter and getting a solution calculated on it. And we're going to put both on them, even though the periscope can't actually see the ships currently at this point. The, uh, the attack periscope operator can still assist to some point with the calculation of targeting solutions, which will get a solution fast enough to be able to fire on them by the time they hit the firing point. Which they're just about at. Ninety-seven percent, ninety-eight, and that should tick over to ninety-nine in just a moment. Ninety-nine, flooding tubes one and two, just waiting for them to flood. And firing tubes one and two. Now we close down the solution, select the next target, and same deal. This is going to be tubes 3 and 4. And tubes 3 and 4 away. Alright, so now we've got to reload all the tubes before we can get another attack off, but that only leaves one ship remaining. Now it's going to be aware, obviously, but that's less of an issue so the first thing we need is to actually get the uh get the torpedo tubes loaded now this take this makes a lot of noise obviously anything with a hydrophone would be able to hear us although in this storm we would be fairly covered um, i'm not too worried about these ships they've got no escorts they're unlikely to have hydrophones they probably don't even have deck defenses at this point Der Torpedo ist auf halbem Weg zum Ziel. now you can obviously do all of this via the attack periscope but um, yeah. The, I'm getting the indicators to lock on at the moment because I've already got targeting solutions programmed for them, but you can see there's zero visibility out of this periscope. 40 it is Sekunden less than torpedo einschlag. Sekunden. <laughs> Now, I was trying to give you a view of the explosions, but I wasn't able to on that one. And we should see the explosion in the background for the other one. There we go. Serious damage to the second. Now it looks like only one of our two torpedoes hit the first target. But both hit the second. And I'm starting my calculations for our third target. And that's the second target sinking. So the second ship we hit, the furthest one from our firing location, has taken crippling damage and is sinking. The closest did take a hit, but it didn't take much damage overall. It's unlikely to be sinking, it may have taken on water, it may be a little bit slower, maybe its maneuverability overall will be a little reduced, but I'm not expecting much more than that, so we're definitely going to have to have a second crack at that one. The third ship is of course completely undamaged at this point, and is going to go evasive, and you can see it's already starting to make its turns to avoid our potential torpedo attacks. Time acceleration again is just to give my crew members time to calculate the solution for the next shot. Now this is going to be a rearward shot, I really don't like doing this if at all possible. Side shots are always the way to go, they give you the largest amount of real estate to actually hit. But uh, these freighters are starting to run, and I've got to take the opportunity where I can. Now, my thoughts here are two torpedoes into target three. If we can get rid of target three, I can put one additional torpedo into the rear of our first target. If that doesn't work, we can actually surface and use the deck gun. So we're shooting for target B here at the moment. 
and tubes flooded torpedo away. Or torpedoes, rather. Now, it's just doing a standard S evasion tactic, so I, my hope is the torpedoes will go far enough ahead that the freighter will actually turn over into the torpedoes from this angle as it turns back in the opposite direction. Der torpedo ist auf halbem Weg zum Ziel. 40 Sekunden bis torpedo and I've remembered I've got the button here that I can actually go straight to the target and see what's going on. So we're just waiting for the torpedoes to hit at this point. Here they come, 10 seconds to impact. Impact one, first torpedo in. And there's the second. And that was a big hit. Fire on board, serious damage. And she's burning about halfway up the ship. In this storm, I would say that's probably her knackered. I doubt I'm going to have to do much more about that one. Now at this point I was toying with the idea of doing exactly the same thing to target A, but the problem is we're almost directly behind target A where I had a little bit of an angle to work with on our second target, or technically third target, so that she might make the turn back into the torpedoes, which is what I was looking for when I fired. Target A, on the other hand, shot directly from the rear, it's just snaking back and forth. That's not what we're after. And we've got the question mark pop up on our third ship and she has sunk so now there's just one ship remaining now according to our missions log up on the top right hand corner we've actually sunk the target that we needed to hit but we've come over all this way i don't really want to let this last ship go so flooding tubes three and four i was gonna let this salvo off but i sort of second guess myself a little bit here i don't have a huge stock of torpedoes on board this type seven so Rather than letting both go, deflood tube 4, just fire tube 3, one torpedo. We've already hit her once. If this torpedo lands, even though this is a really crappy angle to shoot from, we should be right. That should be enough to sink her. If not, we don't want to waste more torpedoes on a bad shot. Ten seconds. And we have no boom. Torpedo is missed, just like I thought it might. So that was a wasted torpedo. We don't want to waste any more. We've got enough to have, do one full reload of the Ford tubes plus two. And that's all we've got left. So six torpedoes remaining in total, not counting the two that we have in tube five, which is the stern tube. But we don't have to use the torpedoes. The freight is on its own, it's unarmed, and it's damaged. Time to surface the boat. So we're technically within firing range of the transport here at the moment, but I want to close in a little bit closer if we can. Changing the lighting over. Now, each of the lighting systems have a different effect. Blue lighting when submerged, which is a throwback to Das Boot, I believe, uh, lowers oxygen consumption. Red at night time increases visual range and white is better for just during your daytime operations and light has changed to red and suddenly we can see a little bit further so now we can get that deck gun firing now i'm just firing standard he rounds at the moment because that's what the submarine was given for default i haven't actually played around with deck gun ammunition at all Going up to flank, the closer we can get, the better, the more shots we can actually accurately hit on target. Now, 
Now, you can manually control the gun as well. Um, I'm not going to do that, not because there's anything particularly wrong with the interface for it. I'm just really shit at aiming. So I'm going to let the crew handle that one. She impact on the stern. Needs to shoot a little bit further up. That's what we wanted to see. Penetration to the side of the ship, likely around when we hit it with the torpedo in our first attack. And it's lit something under the decks on fire. And finally we have some light to actually be able to see what the hell is going on. And another impact in the forward section. Looks like a penetration up around the command tower. So we've now got fires burning in the fore and in the aft of the ship. The fire looks like it's spreading across, and that's about what we were after. Just pump enough HE into it that you can get the contents of the ship to actually start burning, and let it burn to the waterline all on its own. And I think that one is pretty much done. She's still floating, but she's pretty much burned to a crisp. Now that doesn't mean, of course, I'm going to stop firing at her. I'm going to keep pumping shells in until I get the indicator that she's sunk, or I can see that the crew are evacuating the ship. At that point, I'll turn away, or until I run out of ammunition, which is actually what happened here. I continually fired the deck gun until there was nothing left to shoot. Now, it did take about 5 or 10 minutes, but sure enough, eventually the crew abandoned ship, and she started to go down. So at that point, it was time to turn back south and head back to our patrol area. But... Unbeknownst to me at the time, that was actually pretty much the end of our patrol. I entered the patrol area and did the 2,000 kilometers that we had to do inside of it and did not encounter a single ship, nor did I receive a single mission from headquarters to achieve while we were down there. So once the 2,000 kilometers was up, it was simply time to sail back to base, resupply the ship, and request new orders. So anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching uh, this first patrol in U-Boat. On, I'm actually not entirely sure what the update number is off the top of my head right now, but it is the latest version as of the release of this video. So overall, the game has not been sitting around, the developers have definitely done some work on this, and the improvements are very good. The game's more stable, I've had no problems with crashes, I've had no problems with corrupted save games like I have in the past. The AI can still do stupid shit every now and again, although it does appear to be more intelligent than it was previously. There are more ship types now, including more warships, and they will ruin your day very quickly if you do anything too stupid around them, as they should. There's a few quality of life things that need to be adjusted and a few improvements done to some of the new features such as the hardcore targeting mode. That still needs a little bit of work as I mentioned before, but I have no doubt that will be improved and new features will be added over time. So overall, pretty happy where everything's at at this point. So we'll continue this patrol in the very near future. Until next time guys, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care.